Now, you've also been influencing the next generation of professors in your work with teaching assistants, and you were even honored for that as well last year at the celebration of teaching. What sort of impact has this training program that you've created for TAs had on them in terms of their thinking about their teaching and also the undergraduates that they work with? Yeah, the TA training program that we have, I think, has been uh, very successful um, due in a large part to the fact that we've had some fabulous graduate students that have been involved with us, as well as PhD level um, discussion leaders. And they've all basically decided this is something they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So they get the choice to actually indicate that this is um, an activity that they'd like to participate in. That has um, really helped in terms of um, getting people that are open-minded and um, they probably were mostly taught in large lecture classes that were mostly didactic, but they are generally people that um, are more visual, tactile uh, learners, at, at least when we do our learning assessments, that's how the majority of them come up. And they then really are um, amazed by the kinds of uh, changes that you see in the classroom when you get the students to do an activity rather than lecturing at them. Uh, this year we had a few students that actually were assigned and did not elect to do it. Mm -hmm. And it's a way less effective program for, stu for people who um, either don't want to teach in any way, shape, or form, but have to because <laughs> that is part of their job, or they've already taught for a number of years, and our program is geared at taking people who really haven't taught before. And so it's to expose them to a broad range of styles and techniques and allow them to choose what works for them. Because I've had so many people say, you know, I'm not a natural teacher. I'm not like you. I couldn't go up there and, you know, do a demonstration where I have to be kinesin. And I say, oh my God, you know, 10 years ago, you would have never, I would have never imagined myself doing that either. And that is also a style that, that has developed out of what I've been doing. I didn't jump in and start that way. So I can show you some small steps to take and then you can de decide where your comfort level lies because student it won't work for the students or for you if you're trying to do something that is outside of your personality. Yeah, I think that's also very true in the TA training that we do as well. Uh, but it does give the graduate students uh, an opportunity to reflect on the fact that maybe the way they learn best is not the way the students learn best. Yes, I think that's true as well. and. Our students benefit so much from this program, because our undergraduates, because the TAs are really only a year or two beyond the undergraduates, and they're, they have a rapport with the students that I won't achieve. I'm, you know, I'm the mother figure, right? I'm the age of their mothers. I have children in college, and so they might um, interact with me in, you know, they want to get information from me. They can, you know, even about, not just about biology, but about, you know, career choices, etc. But in general, I don't think they feel very comfortable talking to me about, you know, I tried this study strategy and it didn't work. And talking to somebody else who's just been through that is a lot more effective. So they are um, a really important conduit for our students to actually um, open up and explore things other than just you know the actual facts that we're teaching them in biology, but how to learn those facts, how to start thinking about the concepts.